If I ask people why sometimes they are not assertive in their communication, I often get responses like, I'm afraid, or I fear that it, this might have an impact on my relationship with my partner or with my boss or with colleagues or clients. So they have a lot of reasons, a lot of thoughts why they don't do something. So that is something that I want to discover with you. It's a model called the model of logical levels. And together we're gonna explore what the impact is of our thoughts. Let me tell you a little story. Suppose that I would be a salesperson and that I have to sell a certain product. And suppose I don't make the benefits that I should make. Then my boss could tell me, you know what, Jericho, we will double your region. And by doubling your region, you will double your income, he says. Now, is that a guarantee? Of course not. Now, could it be that by doubling my region, maybe I do have some more possibilities and therefore maybe I do have some more opportunities to sell and raise my income? That's a possibility. So what do we see in this model? The lowest level is the level of the environment. By changing something in my environment, I will create a different effect, a different impact. Now, of course, my boss sees very fast that that, that is not the answer. So he says, we'll have to start working on your behaviors. Because every time you go and meet new clients, you now you come in jeans with a dirty t-shirt, chewing gum in your mouth, hey guys, what's up? And that is not the appropriate behavior. So he says, we'll put you in nice clothes, take out the chewing gum, hello sir, hello madam. And by approaching our possible new clients, you'll create less resistance and therefore maybe a little bit more openness in their minds and therefore maybe you'll be able to sell a little more. Is that a possibility? Of course it is. So second level is the level of behavior. Now my boss again sees very fast that that is not really the answer. So he says, we'll have to go a step higher. We'll have to start working on your competences. So he sends me to a, a three-day sales training. I'm going to learn the whole sales flow, and learning to ask open and closed questions, active listening, how to de detect buying signals, all these things. If I really apply all those competences that I've learned, will that have an impact on my number, on my income? Of course it will. So the third level is competences. Now we see that the higher we go in the pyramid, the higher the impact, I have a bigger impact if I work on the level of competences, then only on the level of environment. Now, if I think that the product I need to sell is actually a bad product, or if I think that actually I'm not really a good salesperson, will then those three lower levels help me? Not really. Why? Because the level above is the level of convictions and beliefs. What I have in my mind, what I believe, will actually impact and influence all the rest. If you think you're too heavy, a hundred people can tell you, you look perfect. Will you believe them? No, because it's in your mind. And whatever you have in your mind, wherever your focus is, that is what will impact all the rest. Suppose that you have a one-to-one -one with your boss and you're convinced your boss is not happy with your performance. Very probably when you enter in that conversation, we will see that in your body language you will avoid some eye contact and make your body a little smaller and you will be less proactive in your speaking. However, if you're convinced that your boss is very satisfied, you will see it in the body, you will look right in the eyes and you will be proactive. You will say, hey, what's next? Give me some projects. So what I have in my mind impacts all the rest. The highest level in this model is our identity. Who am I? What are my key values? What is my mission here? We will see that on that level we don't work. This is now, for years and years of self-discovery. What I also notice often is that in companies, most impact and most time goes to the lowest three levels. 
But the key to change is the fourth level, the level of your convictions, the level of your beliefs. And that's what we're going to be working on. That is the level that we talked about when people said, oh, but I don't dare to do this or don't dare to do that. Now, there's two kinds of beliefs. There's what we call stimulating beliefs, beliefs that give us energy, motivation, enthusiasm, believe in ourselves, and limiting beliefs, beliefs that make us small, doubting, uncertain, not confident. And in those two belief systems, we have what we call individual or collective beliefs, beliefs that only I have or beliefs that a group of people have. Now, what happens? You can compare those beliefs like filters. I compare them often with like sunglasses. It's beautiful weather outside and I wear some sunglasses. Now, if I have brown sunglasses on, the world looks a little bit brown. However, if I put on yellow ones or pink ones or blue ones, then the world looks a little yellow, pink or blue. Now, is the world brown, yellow, pink or blue? No, my perception is that it's in those colors. So that's a little bit the same with those beliefs. Suppose that I need to go to my boss and tell him or her that certain things don't work anymore in our collaboration and I'd like to put some clear borders. But I have a belief that, oh, but if I tell my boss that, now he will probably get angry. So what happens is that, floop, there is a limiting belief that pops up and my focus goes there and I'm just influenced with what I'm thinking. That is my only reality I'm seeing. It's like those sunglasses. I only see that color. Now, as long as that is the only reality I see, all the rest will be impacted and influenced by that. So I need to create some antidote. A limiting belief is like poison. It enters your mind and it actually makes you weak and doubting and demotivated. So we need to create some antidote, which is a stimulating belief. So when I have that limiting belief coming up like that, buff, I need to have some stimulating belief to neutralize that. So actually, I don't have to be impacted by that. Now, of course, they need to be, you know, on the same level, meaning that suppose that I'm being bitten by a rattlesnake, then a cobra antidote will not work. It's two different levels. Suppose that I'm afraid my boss will yell at me when I'm telling him certain things how I would like to you know, enhance our collaboration. And I think on the other side, oh, but no, on the other hand, I have great colleagues. We're talking about two different levels. So I need to really find a good antidote. I'm afraid my boss will be upset then I can say, well, but I know that my boss also wants everybody to be happy at work. Or I know that my boss thinks it's very important to have an open, honest communication and feedback. Or I've seen some colleagues who have been very assertive towards my boss and actually it went well. So if I start believing that, that is something that will impact what I have here. We could say that the brain is something like a computer. It's hardware. And it is impacted by a lot of software. And some of that is very old software. Software that happened to us last week, last month, last year, maybe the past 10 years. And so it's time for an update. It's time for an update to start reboosting and refreshing your mind. So an exercise, how you can do that. You could take home a piece of paper and write up on the top limiting beliefs and write down all the limiting beliefs that you have related to the topic you want to work about. For example, you know, assertive communication or what are the belief systems you have related to you as an employee or work in general or you as a parent or a partner or your future or whatever. And then you can take a second piece of paper and write on the top stimulating beliefs and actually do the same thing. All the stimulating beliefs that be now live in your mind that help you in all those different contexts and see how can you neutralize that. And we will see that assertive communication really starts in the mind. 
one that I, I, once that I allow myself to really go forward, to dare to take that step, then all the rest will follow, all those lower levels. Then my competences and my behavior and the effect on my environment will change.